Hello, I'm Shi Zhang from Imperial College London. Today, I will give a presentation about optimizing over trained graph neural networks via symmetry breaking. First of all, our motivation comes from the inverse problems defined over trained GNNs. As we know, GNN is a powerful machine learning model working on graph domain. Our question is, with a trained GNN, which input has the optimal output? Here is our problem definition. The searching space consists of feature X and adjacency matrix A. They could also have some problem-specific constraints. To solve such an optimization problem, the first challenge is the symmetry issue. That is, isomorphic graphs have the same output due to the permutation invariance of GNNs. This invariance is good for training since we don't need to care about different indexing of graphs. However, it's bad for optimization since each graph indexing corresponds to a solution which will enlarge the search space. For example, there are 24 different solutions for this single molecule. To break symmetry in the search space, we propose the following symmetry breaking constraints. Constraints S1 force the connectivity of all subgraphs induced by the first V nodes. 10 solutions will be removed because of S1. Constraints S2 work on the feature level. They are used to make sure node 0 has the most special features under the action of H. One can design the function H based on specific applications so that there are not too many nodes could be chosen as node zero. For example, in the molecular design problem, if a nitrogen item has a smaller function value comparing to a carbon item, it will be chosen as the first node, then 11 solutions will be removed. After the first node is chosen by S2, constraints S3 are used to index the rest of nodes. The basic idea is that node V should have stronger neighbors comparing to the node V plus 1. By stronger, we mean nodes with smaller indexes. Among the three solutions satisfying both S1 and S2, two of them will be removed because they violate S3. Before adding these constraints to our optimization problem, we need to ask, do these constraints reduce the diversity of the feasible site? If that's true, then adding these constraints actually reduce the real search space, which is unacceptable. Thankfully, algorithm 1 can provide at least one feasible indexing for any graph. Please read our paper for details. After resolving the symmetry issue, the next challenge is how to encode a trained GNN into an optimization problem. This equation shows a bilinear formulation for a GN layer, where node features X are variables. Both weight and bias are constants. Since the graph structure is not fixed, we introduce binary variables E to represent elements in the adjacency matrix. Alternatively, we can use BDM to replace these bilinear terms with linear constraints. About the numerical results, we implement our GN formulations and symmetry breaking constraints in a molecular design problem. This application has a lot of constraints for chemical requirements to design reasonable molecules. In table 1, we count the number of feasible solutions in the searching space. When n equal to 6, there are more than 2.5 million solutions if we only implement constraints as one. However, after applying S2 and S3, this number will be reduced to around 50,000, which shows the performance of our symmetry breaking constraints. About the solving time, as shown in figure 1, no more than 10 runs can solve optimality within time limits, so we don't report their average solving time here. After breaking symmetry, however, most runs can successfully solve optimality within time limits. That's all about this presentation. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Thanks a lot for your attention.